Welcome ladies and gentlemen, I'm Austin from Holbrook Aerospace. Today I'm going to go over some of the advantages of the HAVF airfoil system with this propeller template. So the most unique part of the system would be the HAVF airfoil system. This system allows you to change any of these variables independently. So I could swap out an entirely new airfoil, I'd have the exact same cord, angle of attack, and trailing edge thickness. I can increase the cord to any value I'd like with the same airfoil, angle attack, trailing edge thickness, and so on and so on. Angle of attack won't affect any of these values, and trailing edge thickness can be imported directly from the airfoil and scale along with the airfoil, or it can be set to a constant factor, and there's an uh, integer that you can set to 1, 0, or actually anywhere in between to control that exactly with 0 0.5 being halfway in between the trailing edge thickness you request and what's apparent in the airfoil. The only disadvantage of this system is that for airfoils with a zero thickness trailing edge you will require some interpretation to a custom trailing edge thickness or else the trailing edge surface has a zero length error. So to begin I can show you that the library will be importing some of this from. So this would be the book that you would purchase to use with the tool. It has 1600 pages of airfoils that you can use at your convenience. Here we're looking for the FF69 and we can find by search and uh, we can try this as a root airfoil replacement for the current cambered and thin root profile. So all you do is copy this text from the book, go to any spreadsheet tool and use a text import wizard, similar process under Excel, and you just make sure that you have white space delimited so you get these values into different columns here and set them anywhere in the spreadsheet where they can be transposed into a column. Onshape requires this by default that all uh, variables be in a column format, at least for their stock variable studio. So in SolidWorks, that wouldn't be the case. You could keep the same horizontal array. But all of these airfoils have a position where you can put these values. So for the root, that would be HAVF1-X1. There will always be a 1 there. And if you wanted to put this at the second position, be HAVF2, 3, 4, and 5 at the tip. So if we want to replace this at the root, we go up to this position here right between, right below thick mod 1, and we simply paste that value. And this should update here. So you can see we've got that much thicker root airfoil FS69 and uh, it should stand up to any kind of chord value changes we want. So we could try 32. It should get bigger. And it did. We can set a higher angle of attack such as 60 degrees. That works as well. So to go over more functions about the template, uh, there's tip and root diameter right here. So for instance, if we wanted a slightly slar larger blade, get up this to 150. And that would increase the diameter to a point where 150 works. Same for the root diameter, change that from 35 to 45. If we don't have any issues, it should be a complete rebuild from the second variable in the feature tree, and that works as well. Uh, other uh, utilities are complete plan form control, so because the model is cord constrained, we only need one plan form line to constrain the plan form. That would be in sketch two here. We can see that 
straightening out this line will create a much straighter airfoil or much straighter plan form. And we can also mess with anhedral dihedral profile here. So if we wanted an extremely arced propeller, we could do something crazy like that. We'll have no problem rebuilding. But we can set those back just as easily. Something a little less extreme, just for the illustration's sake. Another cool option for this template is that uh, you might notice that all the airfoils are polarized here, so they have a curvature equal to their radial station. The actual airfoils, the two-dimensional ones, are in the part, but these are instantly polarized. If you wanted to go ahead and make a loft, you could use these two-dimensional sketches if you wanted to, but especially for low aspect ratio blades, having the polarized airfoils automatically wrapped around the radial station is extremely helpful because you don't have to go through the process of polarizing. It goes directly from the book, through the array, through the design variable, to the 2D sketch, and wraps around the uh, radial station. And that happens all the way from here up to the tip, although it's much less noticeable at the larger diameter. So going through the variables in, in the variable studio, again, we have the cords, which we covered pretty thoroughly with the root airfoil demonstration. We could go and mess with another the second cord position. That should change this right here. We could increase that to 26, for example. That has the intended effect. So you're able to control any cord position one through five corresponding to these five stations. Same with the angle, would recovered with the root already. We can increase the second station to 45 for further example. Cord position one, this is an uh, interesting variable. So right now all these airfoils are on the quarter cord, but if we wanted to, we could use that line to con completely control the leading edge. So it's nice to have Simple arrays here, five zeros we can copy in our spreadsheet just so we don't have to type them all in. We go to core position one, click here, paste. Now this line will control the leading edge exactly. If we want the trailing edge of all the airfoils to be on that line, we just set all those values to one. So just copy a column of five ones here. Go back to the spreadsheet, chord position one, we can paste. This is really helpful for, say, if you wanted a completely straight trailing edge propeller, you can go back to the plan form and sketch two. You can make this a completely straight value here a more apt solution would be to com replace the spline with a line, but for the example here, brevity, we can use that. Now you have a completely straight trailing edge, and no matter what you set the cords values to, your propeller will always have a completely state straight trailing edge. Same goes for the leading edge. If you want to control the leading edge, set all these values to zero. Uh, this chord position length one, that's just a variable for the model. So the trailing edge thicknesses are useful as well. So you can see the trailing edge well here. And we can go ahead and hide this sketch. If I wanted to set the trailing edge thickness to one millimeter, I could do it individually or grab this same value we have here. 
go to the trailing edge thickness, paste it in, this trailing edge thickness should double exactly. So you'll notice here none of the airfoils changed except near the trailing edge. The general airfoil is the same, its cord is the same, its angle of attack is the same, just trailing just trailing edge thickness is changed. So if we set this value to zero, we can have some issues because the particular airfoils we have here do have some zero thickness trailing edges. So you don't want this line length to go to zero in your CAD system, it will complain. We can still show you what it looks like. It has the expected effects. We could copy a uh, quarter millimeter trailing edge thickness back and it should be functioning completely again with a thinner trailing edge. So this is the trailing edge index at one. The exact thickness here will be displayed at 0 0.5. The thick trailing edge thickness will be exactly where it would be at the chord scale and in between that and your requested trailing edge thickness. So this is useful if you are using uh, airfoils with a zero thickness trailing edge you can set these values to 0 0.01 and get extremely close to the actual airfoil thickness in the library without having any zero length lines or surfaces so that's really helpful. Thick mod is another useful uh, variable you can use to adjust airfoils on the fly. So we already have a very thick root here, but we can go ahead and double it up if we want it to be even thicker. So this is an easy, quick adjustment, especially useful for making uh, good structural improvements without swapping an entire airfoil. And you can see it's very thick. <laughs> So we're probably not going to keep that, but in a case where you're thinking, oh, this transition is too thick suddenly, you can easily go to the second airfoil position, go to thick mod 2, say so let's make this 1.5, uh, the second trailing edge will get thicker, or the second airfoil will get thicker. So modeling this way can be extremely quick. Uh, say, for example, we want to take all the camber out of the tip to reduce drag. We just go to the book. We can search for, say, a NACA 00, zero airfoil. All the NACA zeros should show up in search on the left here in my PDF program. You can just click on them scroll through take the NACA 0010 copy this array transpose it in our office suite Copy the column, and we go to HAVF five X one. Can bring the profile more into view, and there it's pasted in. So the trailing edge thickness index is really useful here, depending on what airfoils you're using. It's nice to try to get away with a little thinner trailing edge on the tip, especially it's easy to get away with if you're building something. It's hard to get away with the thinnest trailing edge along the whole profile, but it's often advantageous to decrease it in this section. So. 
if we were using a more tra reasonable trailing edge thickness like 0 0.8 You could see that the effect on the NACA 0010 would be significant because of its small cord length. So in a case like that, you could come down to trailing edge index 5, just adjust this to 0 0.1. So this model will be available for purchase on my website, but I'm also releasing a completely free three profile version and in the book, all the method and, and calculations required to set up this document are listed. So the format is completely open and you're free to replicate it. The templates are here for your convenience. And I even supply a list of free airfoils in the article section of my website, which you can copy these arrays from. You copy this out. It will be an, an array identical from the ones in the book. So you could copy that in just like anything else. So if you like this video, give me a like. Let me know what you think of the HAVF airfoil system. And if you'd like to use it in any of your projects, what you think you would use it for. And look out for the next video. Until then, bye.